So I've been going a bit too slow, so I'll try and pick up the tempo a little bit. Um, so let me give you an example of how we combine instructions to make more complex instructions. We've seen basic instructions for read file, write file, and put stra and put stra lun. Now let's combine them into something using the next feature that we're going to see. So I'm going to write, you remember that the write file operation, it silently put a string into a file, but didn't sort of uh, tell me what it was doing. Uh, I'm going to create a more talkative version that's going to display a bit of information on the screen as it goes along. And I'm going to call it verbose write file. Verbose just means uh, lots of words. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it by combining the putstra functions with the write file functions. So the type of my new function, verbose write file, will be the same as the type of the regular write file. So it's going to do the same job, it's just going to do it with a little bit more noise. Okay. So the first thing you need to know is how to combine one instruction with another instruction so that you first run the first instruction and then the next instruction. How do we build a com composite instruction from pieces? We do that here using something called do notation. So we're going to start with the word do, and then we're going to write a number of lines which are all lined up in the same column. Each line will be an instruction, and when it and then we're building an instruction to first do the first line, then the next line. So this might look a bit more like programming in the programming languages you've seen before, if you've seen one. So the first thing I want to do is print uh, a message that I'm what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put str on a new line. I'm going to write file or writing. I haven't started yet. Writing file and then the name of the file. So let me put some brackets in here because I'll need them. What's the name of the file? It's the first argument, the file path. That's a string. Um, okay, so that's the first message. After the first message, I'm going to write on another line, another message. Let's write the contents. Let's not write out the, all of the contents. Let's just write some of the contents. So we've got a list which could be very big, and we just want to show a little bit of it. Maybe first, I don't know, 10 characters. So how do I get the first 10 characters from a list of whoever knows how many characters? Anybody remember the function for that? Take 10. Yeah. There's a function called take. So we can do take 10 to take the first 10 characters. Oh, writing in the wrong place. Uh, it was down here. We're going to take 10 from the contents. That'll take 10 characters on the contents. If there aren't 10 characters, it'll take as many as it can. So it's a safe function. It can't, it can't give us an error. So now I have a write file which is going to tell us what file it's going to write to, tell us a little bit what it's going to put in the file, but now we need to actually do the job. We can't just talk about it. So the next line, which is in the same column, so I have to start in the same column in order to make this do block, otherwise we'll get an error. I'm going to actually use the write file function to write the file in the contents. And then I'll finish off by saying I'll finish off by saying I'm done. Okay? So I've built uh, an instruction. Let me run that in the terminal window instead. So I'm going to verbose write file. Um, name of the file. Let's call it a text file. And the contents of the file will be some stuff.
Oh, what's the name of where? Well, what's the name of the file that I'm editing? Three B, and that should be three B. Verbose write file. Ah, small f. Right, that's right. Yes, I did mean verbose write file. I wrote it with a big F, didn't I? Let's uh, oh, slow. Let's just edit that back and then. Right, okay. Let's see what happens. And, oh, I'm not in the right directory. I need to go down a level to see that file. Um, let me just do that. Let me just copy that file that I just created. What did I call it? Temp to um, copy it to live folder so we can see it. Okay. So we created a file with the contents that I just did. But what was the difference? The difference was it printed out stuff as it went along. It told me it was writing a file. It told me a little bit about the contents. And then it told me it was done. So I created a more complex instruction from a simpler one using the sequencing in a do block. Okay? That's very simple. Any questions about that so far? So what is... What, is the type, what are the types of the things and the lines of a do block? They all have to be I.O. of something in this example. And the type of the whole thing will be the same as the type of the last line. And the type of the last line is an I.O. of unit in this case. Okay? So they don't all have to have the same type, but they do all have to be an I.O. of something. Okay, let's... Let's take another example. This time I'm going to introduce a slightly different feature. I'm going to write a something called copy file, which is going to copy the contents of one file into a new file, or another file. Okay? So the type of this will be to take a file path, another file path, and copy the contents of one file into the other, overwriting it if it exists. So it's little bit unsafe. Okay. So what's different about this example? I'm going to call them from file and to file. They're the names of my parameters. And I'm going to write my do block on a new line. I can write the do up here, but as long as all these things line up, that's the important thing. Okay, so I'm going to read file. Uh, the from file. And then what I want to do is write that contents into this file. So you might think, oh, we can do that by doing this thing here. We can write file, the to file, what we get by reading the first file. Okay? What does that look like? <coughs> sort of logical, right? We're going to read the file to get a string. And then we're going to send that string into this new file. Where's the type error? There's a type error. What's the error? Someone at the back. Too cool for school. What do you say? Where's the type error? Yeah. Yeah, so this is not a string, right? This is an I.O. of string. It's an action, an instruction for producing a string. So we can't do that. That's what we need to do, is we first need to do this operation, but then we need to get the string out of this. Now I said, ah, oh, you can't get the string out of one of these guys. I said, you can't go from an I.O. of something to just a string, an I.O. of string to string. Well, you can't, but you can if you're inside a do block. And why is that? Well, because you're inside a do block, you're already going to be an I.O. of something. So you're not going to escape the evil I.O. Right? You're not going to be able to hide that you've done I.O. Because I'm in a do block, this is, the whole thing is going to be an I.O. So inside the do block, I can get hold of the string. How do I do that? Well, I give it a name. I use something that a bit look, looks like a generator in the list comprehensions. And in fact, they are related, but in a complicated way that I can't go into here. I can get the string from the file with this notation. So this says, 
execute these instructions to get a string and call the, na call the string s. Now in the rest of the instructions I can use s. Okay, so s now is what we say in scope. It's visible to the rest of the instructions. So the next instruction is the easy one and that is to write file. We're going to not shout about it. We're going to write file. What file are we going to write? It's the, the to file, the second parameter. And what contents are we going to put in that file? We're going to put the string s. So there's my new compound instruction and I've introduced this new notation which we can use anywhere to give a name to the value returned by an instruction but we can't use it on the last line. So the, the last line has to be without one of these guys. Okay. So we can use any of the lines can use this guy. In fact we could have even done it over here but if we do it over here it's kind of boring because we know that putstra lun only returns a blob, only returns a unit. So there's no point kind of asking give me the unit. It's not going to be very interesting. Okay. Any questions about that? All right. Let's take a slightly different example. Let's write a function which computes the length of a file. How many characters are there in the file? Okay. So here's a possible type signature for that. Does that look right? I'm going to get a, ask for a file path, the name of a file. I want to read the file and give you back how many characters there are in the file. No, impossible. Impossible. Because you can't read a file without doing I.O., without input-output. I.O. stands for input-output, interaction with the operating system. And so it's impossible to write it with this type. The only way you can do it is if you have an I.O. You can only get the, the, the integer you want by doing some, by running some instructions. Okay. So what instructions do we need to run? Well, we need to read file the, from the file. And that will give us a string. Let's give that string a name. Let's call it s. So read the file and call it s. And what are we going to do with s? We're going to take the length of it. It's a string, and we want to know how long it is. So we're going to compute the length of the string. Okay. So what about that? What does Haskell say if I give it that? It doesn't like it. It says, couldn't match the expected type. I expected to see an IO of int. But what I actually saw was an int. And it's referring to this line here. The last line of a do block is the same as the type of the whole do block. And the type of the do block that we want is an IO of int. So the last line has to be an IO of int. And we only have an int. So we have to ask the question, if we have an int, how do we get an instruction for producing an int? How do we get from int to IO of int? We know we can't go the other way, but is it reasonable to go this way? Well, the answer is yes. Can we, if we have a number, can we create an instruction for giving you that number? The instruction, it doesn't have to do anything. It's a stupid instruction, but it can definitely give you that number, right? The way to do it is a function called return. So return, if you give it a thing, it gives you a trivial instruction for producing that string, that thing, sorry. So if you give it, an, this is the instruction for producing an int, and it interacts with the operating system, but without doing anything at all, okay? So it's a kind of very stupid instruction on its own. But you see, we need it to build these complex, complex things. On its own, it's really boring. But as part of a bigger program, it's essential. Question? No. <laughs> All right. Now, if you've done programming before, you've seen return in other programming languages. Forget that. This is not to do with control flow. This is not saying, I'm done. All it is, is a way of taking a value, in this case something of type int, and turning it into 
an IO of int. Okay. Any questions? All right. I'm going to change tack a little bit. I want to play Hangman. You know Hangman? It's a word game. <coughs> so I'm going to play Hangman down here. I've got six lives and I've got to guess one or more letters. Okay, so let's guess the most common letters in the English alphabet are E, S and T. Let's guess three letters for start starters. Not bad. Um, R, no. Got four lives left. Uh, anybody? N, M, S. Oh, I've done S. Damn. Oh, okay. That was kind to me. Didn't take a life. Um, Q. Exclusive. Okay, let's try that again. Um, S T E. Always good. Secret. <laughs> you wish. Sir. Uh, no, the R's already there. Seagoer. <laughs> what? That's nothing. I tell you, I'm, I'm, I, they, these words have been really nice. This, this word list is evil. Uh, I swear it. I think half of the words are fake. They're, they're like words I've never heard before. Phaseless. No, these are all pretty good ones, actually. No, you, you have to try this one. It's... Um, it's super nasty. Okay, let me let me. Um, we're going to write that that program. Uh, well, yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't think I'm not sure I can code it that quickly. Um, so I've I've started a little bit of code here. Oh look, I've imported that guy we talked about in the first half. Uh, that'll be useful. Um, that's how many guesses the game is going to have. This is where I'm getting my words from a file. This, this is on the Mac. There's probably a word list on, on most systems. On the Mac, this is where, the, where it lives. It is huge. It's this many words long. It's massive. And most of the words seem to be made up. I'm sure they're not in regular dictionaries. It's ginormous. Okay. So when you play the game, while we're playing the game, the game has a certain state. There's a bit of information that we need to know to play the game. So the game has to remember I mean, if you're playing against somebody else, the, the other person has to remember what the word is, okay? If you forget the word, you can't really play hangman, okay? So whoever finds the word has to remember the word. Here, the computer's going to find the word for me. The computer has to remember the word, and it has to remember the guesses I've made so far. Now, if it has those two pieces of information, given that I've already fixed the guess limit, then it can calculate everything else. It can calculate how to print out what I've got so far. It can calculate how many lives I've got. That's how many bad guesses I've done, subtracted from the guess limit. Okay? So there's a game state that the game is going to need to maintain. So I'm going to start by programming the bits of the game that have nothing to do with I.O. Okay? The logic of the game. And I'm going to start with the game state. So the game state will be a data type. I have to write it with a big G. And a, a game state will contain just two things. So I'm going to call, give it, call the constructor G because I'm lazy. Um, and it will be a string. Sorry, my hands are not working. And a string. This will be the guess and the word. Actually, it might be nice to write this in record notation. Let's write the first one as the uh, word and the second one as the guess. So what I've defined is a data type with two fields and the selector functions that for extracting the word and extracting the guess from the, from the game state. Okay. 
So that's what I'm going to use to store the game information. It's going to be a parameter to a function. So we're going to write the non-IO part. And normally when you develop this as a real thing, you would put these in different modules. The bits with, that deal with IO would be on their own. And you would put as much of the game logic or the, the logic of the system in a separate thing that has nothing to do with IO. So let me, let me do those then. Let me start with an interesting one. The show world. The show word, sorry. So if you've got a game state, you need to print it out on the screen. You need to print out the bits of the word that you have guessed. Okay. So from the game state, we can do that. We can think of that as the word skeleton, the outline of the word. So if I'm going to show a word, <coughs> skeleton, yeah. Thanks. Um, that was just a comment, by the way. Uh, so the game state, what does a game state look like? It's got the constructor G. It has a word and some guesses. Okay, So that's what a game state looks like. Two pieces of information. I've done pattern matching here so I can get them. Uh, and what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to print out the characters of the, of the word. But if the, word has, if the character has not been guessed, I'm going to print an underscore character. So I'm going to build a string, a list of characters. I'm going to use a list comprehension for that. I'm going to use a list comprehension by taking the characters from the word. But for each character, I'm going to reveal that character only if that character has been found. So let me write a little function for that. Reveal. It's a local function. I'm only going to use it inside this one. Reveal um, some character when the character is an element of the word. So I'm using that lm function that we looked at in the beginning in the Kahoot. I'm writing it in fix because it's easier to read. If the character is an element of the word, then I'm going to show the character. Otherwise, I'm going to show the underscore character. Okay. Otherwise, okay. So let's try that. Show word. Show her. Uh, let's build a, a game state with the word banana and the guess is um, X, Y, Z, A. Let's show the show. So, what, what word do we get? That doesn't look right. Yeah, we're not. Um, uh, there's a bug there. I don't want to know whether the character is in the word. I know it's in the word. I've just taken it from the word. I want to know whether it's in the guesses. Thanks very much. Uh, let's debug that. Okay. Almost looked deliberate, didn't it? Because it now nicely lines up. All right, that looks right. Okay, so if the only correct letter I guessed was an A, then what we're going to display is A, something A, something A. Questions? All right, next, next function. So I'm going to these, I've thought about these building blocks in advance. Obviously, this is part of the design process. Um, I'm going to need to know how many lives I have left. Okay, because that's also something I'm going to print out and use to decide whether the game is over or not. So... The lives of some state will be equal to, it's the number of lives we start with, which is guess limit, minus the number of bad guesses. So let's compute the bad guesses and work out how many there are. I'm going to do it with length of the bad guesses where the bad guesses are so what are the bad guesses they are all the characters where the characters are drawn from the guesses 
of the state. So I'm using my data type here. I have a function called guess, which gives us a string from the state. So I'm going to take the guesses from the state, and I'm going to take all the characters from those, which are not in the word. C is not LM of the word. Oh, this is pattern matching. Was not a, uh, State was not a good idea. I'm going to use pattern matching. G word guesses. Um, so here it's the guesses, and here it's the word. Okay. I started off using just the state and using the functions to pick it apart, then decided that was too much work, so I'm going to use pattern matching instead. Okay. Does that look right? We can be all the characters which are not in the word, calculate their length, uh, and that's what we get. That'll be a bit mean. If you type the same character twice, that might not be so friendly. Okay. All right. Um, what else do I need? Well, there's not much more logic I need to play this game. I need to know whether I've won or lost. I need to calculate whether I've won or lost. So there's two functions, both of the same type. If I have a game state, have I, when have I won the game state? I've won it when I've guessed all the letters in the word. Another way of writing that would be, if we, sh if we show the word, then what we get should be equal to the word. In other words, there's no underscores. So if I show word from the state, I get usually things with underscores, except when I've guessed all the letters, then there'll be no underscores. The thing that I show will be equal to the word of the state. And I've lost, it's not the opposite of one, because there's three states. You've either won the game, you've lost the game, or you're in the middle of a game. Okay, so it's not just not won, <laughs> that wouldn't work. So I've lost when the lives of the state, the number of lives, which I calculated up here, is less than or equal to zero. Okay. This might go negative if I guess lots of things. Okay. Any questions? All right, so that's all the code that we need that doesn't have to do with I.O. That's all the stuff that deals with the logic of the game. What about the actual pit? The reason why we're here today is to know about AI. But if you're going to write a, a program, a standalone program, then a standalone program, a program that you can compile and run separately, for example, always has a function called main, which has type IO of nothing. So this is the main program. This is the thing we're going to run. Question? Uh, a question. Isn't it better to take the loss part before the one part? Oh, um, these are just two definitions of functions. So these are just definitions. So it doesn't matter what order they come in. Even if one depends on the other, it doesn't matter what order they come in in a Haskell file. So the order of these definitions, has no, they're two different definitions. The confusing thing is that I, I, I was lazy and I wrote the type together. So I combined the type declaration, which I don't normally do. But basically they're just two different functions, so it doesn't matter which order you define them. Good question. Okay. So the simplest program I know that has this type is this one here, but that's not going to be very useful. So I'm going to break this down into two parts. Okay? The first part will be to get a random word from the dictionary. Once I've got a random word, then I can start playing the game. Okay? So there's going to be two steps. So the main function is going to start by getting a random word from a dictionary. And I'm going to write, so it's going to be a do block, and I'm going to write a function for that. I'm going to call it get random. And get random should give me a word. Okay? So I haven't written that function yet, that, that, that instruction yet. It's not a function, it's an instruction. This will be a type IO string. 
this will be the string that I get from it. Okay. So what am I going to do with that string? Well, then I'm going to write another function called play to play the game. But this function is going to need a parameter. The parameter will tell it what's the state of the game. Okay. So play will have a game state as its argument. What game state should we start with? Well, we've just chosen the word by choosing a random word using this guy. So the word we want is W. And how many guesses do we have at the start of the game? How many guesses have we made at the start of the game? We've made no guesses. So that's the empty string, which we could write like that. Or we could write it as empty brackets. It doesn't matter. So that's the shape of the, the function. And I'm going to need get random, which is going to be something which is an IO to produce me a string. And I'm going to need a play, which is going to be something which, if you give it a game state, will play the game for you. It will interact with the player. It doesn't return any values. Okay. So its, it's only purpose is to play the game. But in order to do that, it needs to know what game state it has. So I'm going to define these two things. And I like, I like fish. Um, so I uh, chose this randomly yesterday. Uh, so it's completely random. Um, so this is something of type IO of string. Uh, it's not a very interesting random function, but it'll do to start playing the game. And we can fill that in later. OK, so this was the strategy. Let me just get that out of the way. That's the strategy of the main. Get a random word for the dictionary, start the first round of the game with the word and the empty list of guesses. So that's what I've done there, and my random word will always be fish for the moment. So now let's play the game. So let's play the game with... Now you notice before I, I couldn't decide whether to write state or to write the pattern match with the, with the pieces of the state, which was the word and the guesses. And sometimes it's a bit difficult to, what, what is best. Sometimes it's good to write, do the pattern matching. Sometimes it's good to use, to use the functions. Hey, good news, you can do both in one definition. Something called an as pattern, which allows you to look at one thing in two different ways. And that's to write, you write this. So I can either think of the game state as a single thing called state, or I can think of it using this pattern matching. It's a game state comprising which consists of a word and guesses so this kind of allows you to do two different what things at the same time it's quite a useful uh, trick it's not essential okay so how do i play the game well it depends what i do if i've lost if i've won or if it's neither of those okay so let's start with the two easy cases or rather the two base cases hint if I've won the game, then what do I do? Oh, let's print out a message. You won. If I lost the game, Notice I didn't need to do a, put a do block around this guy because this is already an instruction. Okay? I'm not, I only need a do block when I have more than one instruction to compose together. I don't need a do block if I've only got one instruction. Um, if I've lost the game, well, then I'm going to do more than one thing. I'm going to... Well, let me, uh, yeah, let me do, let me put this in a do block for the sake of it. Um, loser, you're a loser. And we're going to put, learn, let's put the string, the, the, the word was, the word was, what was the word? 
the word was this guy, W. So I'm going to tell the loser what the word was. That's kind of, kind of kind, isn't it? Otherwise, it's a bit boring if you lose without knowing. So I made a little, I made a little do block there. I could have done it in one line. Okay. Now, this is where the action happens. You haven't won. You haven't lost. So what do we do? Well, we print the number of lives. Okay. I'm just following my sort of sketch of the strategy here. Print the number of lives. Put, so I'm going to do several things. So I need a do block. Put strlearn and lives the lives of the state um, let me just let me just stop there that is that should be complete program but there's an error in it um, I'm trying to print out the lives of the state so what's gone wrong here it was expecting a list of characters and actually got an int. So this is an int. So I can't print it out, right? So what do I need to do? What function do I need to use to make that possible to print? Show. So I need to remember that I have to show that integer to convert it to a string. So I've, put, I've displayed the number of lives. Now I'm going to display what I've guessed so far and that is show word that shows the skeleton of the word uh, wh what word am I going to show it's W so sometimes I'm using the state and sometimes I'm using the pattern match it's kind of convenient so now I've shown the word what do I do next I need to get a new guess from a player so this is where I need to introduce another basic building block and that is, um, I'm going to use get line, and this is a function which is a, it's an instruction for delivering a, for producing a string. So let's see what we get when we type it. Not very much. So what's happening? Well, it's in the middle of executing the instruction. The instruction is get a line. What that means is get a line from the input, the terminal here. Okay, So it's waiting for a line. Well, it's not going to do anything until I give it a line. So here is a line. Well, it's not a line yet. It's not a line until I press the return character. That makes it a line. The new line character at the end turns that into a line. And that's the line that it will deliver. Okay? So it's an instruction. You saw it execute the instruction, waiting for me to type a line. Once I'd done that, then it was able to deliver its result, which is the string. Okay, so I'm going to get line. Not there, I'm not. I'm going to do it up here. I'm going to get line to get a line from the user. Maybe I should tell the user I want a line. I'm going to put str without um, type some characters. Okay, so it's going to ask me to type some characters, and now it's going to get a line. So let's give that line a name. Let's call that um, new guesses. So there I've, got, I've got some new guesses that I got by reading from the, um, from the line. What am I going to do now? Well, I've completed a round of the game. So I need to new, start a new round. I need to start a new round of the game. I need to start again. I need to go back up to the top, as it were. Okay. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to use recursion. I'm going to play a game with the state. The word hasn't changed, thankfully, but the but the guesses have changed. The guesses are now the new guesses joined together with the old guesses. So I'm using recursion in I.O. The type of the last line is the type of the whole thing, and it is indeed an I.O. So the types match. 
So I'm using recursion to write the game loop. Right? There's what you call a loop here, and that loop is written using recursion. What are the base cases of recursion? Well, they're here when the game is over. Two base cases, you either win or you lose, you finish the game. But otherwise, you go on. So let's play the game. No, we can't play the game, I've got bugs. Let me just expand this a bit so I can see what's going on. Um, couldn't match type char with game state. Ah, I don't want to show word W, I want to show word the whole state. In order to show the word, you need to know what the words are and the guesses. Okay, so the type was wrong there. Okay, so let's play the game. Uh, I, I've got a feeling an F will be in there somewhere, don't you think? But there's definitely not an X. Uh, and there's definitely an I, an S, and an H. Yay, I won. How did I manage that? Okay, it's a bit too easy at the moment. We've got one more function to write, and I've got two minutes to do it. Uh, I reckon I can do it. We're going to get a random word. Okay, fish is not a very random word. So do. What am I going to do? Let me read file. What file am I going to read? Ah, somewhere up here I've defined it. Dict. I'm going to read the dict file. It's a bit of a monster, so this is not very efficient, but it'll do the job. So I'm going to read the dict file, and that's going to give me not just one word. It's going to give me um, a mass of words. Well, actually, it's going to give me one massive string. So what I want to do with that string is I want to convert that string into a list of words and pick a random word. Okay. So in order to pick a random word, I'm going to need a random number. I can get a random number from random RIO in the range. Remember, we always index at 0 and upwards between 0 and the, the dictionary length, minus 1. So I'm going to pick a random number. So this is of something of type IO of int. So let's give the int a name. Let's call it I. So I've got the words from a file, and I've got the an, a random index using the random RIO function. And now I, what I want to do is return the ith index of the words of this guy. And you may remember the function words, not one of the one I defined. It's a function from a string, and it breaks it down into its individual words, breaking it wherever it sees a space or a new line. So I'm going to take the words of that dictionary and I'm going to pick out from that list of words the ith word using the index operation. Let's try that function. Does it have an argument? I call it a function, it's not, it's an instruction. Let's run that instruction. Um, no saline, no saline, no saline, no saline. Miss Providence, I told you they were good. Romanization, stopped, unscattered. I know some of the ordination, that's not too bad. Outweigh, lowness, causality.